Hi everybody, this is Jamie with C4 Depot with a Cinema 4D tutorial on how to use Easy Cloud to make volumetric clouds and use them in conjunction with an HDRI sky panorama. And the reason why we need a tutorial for this is because pyro clusters do not respond to object-based lighting in HDRI images. So the first thing that you want to do is to load an HDRI into your sky. So I use um, at HDRI Sky. It's a free plugin at c 4 depotcom in the back room. So all you do is just click on this thing uh, in your content browser and highlight this. And I'm going to use one of the c 4 Depot uh, Skies called Sunrise 38 and click on the JPEG and do the same for the HDRI. Okay, so we have a sky loaded into the scene now. So what you want to do is look for the, the, the light source, which is clearly here, and then add an infinite light. And the infinite light is going to shine in the direction of the z-axis, so we want to try to match this infinite light up with the light in our sky. So we're going to go to coordinates and do, I don't know, maybe minus 90. And I think this has to be in like a 90 or something like that. Let's take a look at that. So this is getting pretty close to where the sun is shining in our HDRI image. Now the next thing that we want to do is add Easy Cloud. Now Easy Cloud is um, also a C4 Depot a tool that is available at c4depot.com and uh, we've got nine presets in here and let's just click uh, the Cumulonimbus clouds and you can do this later, but uh, one of the things that I I did is I added uh, infinite valleys to the uh, landscape area. And if that comes in a little bit high, just uh, move that down. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch over to another scene where I've already got this uh, set up. And I've got infinite valleys in here and my the same HDRI and the Cumulonimbus uh, preset from Easy Cloud. Now, these are the settings that I used on Easy Cloud. Um, I'm using a cloud opacity of 2%, uh, turbulence smoothness of 20, and a turbulence scale of 800%. And then I changed the coloring of the cloud to be more uh, in, in sync with the HDR uh, sky panorama. So it's got some of these kind of yellowy and orangey colors going into it. And then I change the ambient color, which is going to affect your shadows into this kind of purpley gray color. And let's see, I'm using self shadows, which is slower. Uh, bottom flatness of about 86%. Global cluster radius 2000. And what I've done is I've used uh, a very low cloud count of only like 50 clouds, uh, but I've been I've made these um, cluster sizes a lot larger. So the the clouds seem to be kind of going down, kind of elongated along the x-axis. So the uh, cluster is really longest along the x, and it's pretty high, 1500 and then a thousand on the Z. Now one thing I had to do is I had to hack the easy cloud because these are actually limited to a thousand percent so what you want to do is go to the user data manage user data and then go to the uh, cluster scale and I had to change this from a thousand percent to five thousand percent that just changes the maximum allowable tolerance to a higher number Okay, so that's how you can hack these uh, uh, values if you're a little bit restricted on the minimum or the maximum. 
And that's it. So what I did is, I'm, I just already rendered this out. This is the HDR image. Um, I've got like some water back here, so that's why we've got a line back there for the horizon. But this is what the sky looks like when it renders out. And with these various presets, you can get clouds that are a lot closer. Uh, if for any reason you wanted to show something kind of going up and ascending into the clouds. These clouds pretty much match the ones that are in the HDR image as far as coloring is concerned. And that's how you add volumetric clouds to an HDR sky panorama scene. And that's it. Thanks a lot, folks. Um, we hope that uh, you make use of these tools we have, and we'll see you at the depot. Take care. Bye now.